Yeah. What is time? Is he cursing at you? No. No. <laughs> what's the um what's the talent like at your position? Great. Great. I mean we uh we have great talent. We um we got a chip on our shoulder, we come to practice every day, we got a lot of opportunity ahead. Um so I, yeah, I'm I feel really good about it. How much has Devin progressed from last year to this year? Devin could progresses on a daily basis, you know, he's uh, he, he's starting to understand what it takes to be a Big Ten linebacker, and, um, you know, I'm, I, just, he's having a heck of a spring so far. He had a heck of an end of the season and got better and better, and he's the kind of guy that comes to work every day, so he gets better every day, and you really see it, and he's working on some some things, and very excited about him. Do you feel confident saying he's one of your top three guys right now with Mike Crane and Robo? No, I can't say that. I think every linebacker right now is uh, is one of my top guys. You know, I think that they all have to come to work and um, and and they have an opportunity. You know, this is all about opportunities in the spring, and they show up. And you know, whether it's one rep or a hundred reps, they got to take advantage of it and and work their butts off. So I'm not ready to say, you know, uh, at least personally, I'm not ready to say, um, you know, who the top guys are. I think they all have have to earn and. and you know, do their part. The ferocity that Devin plays with on special teams, does he play that way at linebacker as oh, well? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's not allowed not to. <laughs> but, he, he wants uh, yeah, to hit he's, you. He's, uh, he's, he's, he's really good. You know, he, he's the kind of guy who shows up and, you know, you got some, you know, it's just he shows up every single day in every drill, whether it's special teams, whether it's, you know, linebacker stuff. You know, he, he gets it, and, you know, that's important. In your short time here, you've had a lot of uh, different roles, a lot of jobs in, in this uh, program. What's that like going from one role to the next? Uh, I love it. You know, I, I'm the kind of guy who likes to do a lot of things and uh, takes pride in anything I do. Um, you know, so, you know, I enjoy it. And I enjoy, you know, different roles and learning and doing different things. And, um, you know, so I, I, I kind of accept it and, and, and enjoy it. It's, you know, like I, I tell the players all the time, you know, life is about opportunities. You know, you gain opportunities with everything every day. You know, and if you really want something, then, you know, you can't let those opportunities pass you by. You got to take advantage of everything, you know, whether it's reps on the field or, you know, it's tasks that someone tells you to do in the office. You know, it's the same thing. It's, it's all about your work ethic and taking advantage of opportunities. And, I, you know, I think our guys are doing that right now, and I think I've done that and got to keep doing it. I'm You've gotten a lot of accolades for your uh, recruiting. And, and, um, how, what, what's, for you, what's the key to being a good recruiter? People around me the people in the building I mean I recruiting is, uh, is is it takes a village to recruit a to recruit a top athlete you know it's just like it takes a, a great program you know I'm not ready to take credit for for any kid that I've recruited personally it's, it's everyone it's I, I work with great people um, there's great kids and people on the team you know so everyone that the people meet here at the school there's tremendous people in the school um, it's just a, it's a great place with great people and that's you know they, everyone should get credit you know those accolades are good and and you know, it, it, of course, it's it's something that you'd be proud of, but you know, to me, it's 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 really it's it's an everyone kind of type of thing. It's not an individual. You know, when it comes to recruiting, and you know, anyone that tells you different, I think, is wrong. Chris, you've been involved in the recruiting process as both a high school coach and a college coach, <clears throat> and players build relationships with other players in that process, whether yep. it's before they commit or after they commit. Why are those relation player to player relationships important? Uh, in terms of, can you explain? Yeah, just in like, terms um, of like once a guy commits. He makes a connection with the guy in the program. Yeah, yeah. Why is that important? Yeah, I mean, it's just like anything. You know, it's it's a team, right? So, you know, any relationship that you build, you know, it's 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 rewarding when you can build a relationship with somebody. I, I feel like, and you know, and and I think when the players can build relationships with each other, it just it, it helps with recruiting. Number one, it helps your team down the road because they feel bonded from before they were even a teammate. You know, I think that's that helps, and it just a, it, I think it just gives a better understanding of how to be a, a great person to the players you know like even if the if the player doesn't come to, to Michigan right it's like you still built a relationship with somebody from a different state with a different background you know you don't have to be their enemy mm -hmm. you know so I, I just think um, I, but it is important of course it's, it's a good thing I think we do a good job of it here. McCray doesn't seem to be more of really a vocal guy is he more of a leader by example type, uh, type of guy? Um, yeah I mean he's, he's, he's pretty vocal when he needs to be you know I don't think it's, it's out in the open and stuff but you know he leads he leads he gets vocal um, he's, he's been tremendous he's a, he's a worker and you know McCray's the kind of guy that it was taken away from him you know he was injured and he couldn't play and, you know that's the chip that he has on his shoulder on a daily basis he's not gonna let run rep go by because he knows what it feels like to be on the sideline so 
you know, that's exciting to see. And then the players kind of, that, that's his bad, biggest leadership quality is showing up every day and, and understanding because he's seen the, the bad side of being injured and being on the sideline. Chris, who's working at the two return spots at the kickoff and the punt returns? Ooh, uh, got about 15 guys. I'm not ready to answer any uh, any specifics about those okay. guys. Um, we're repping the hey, It's like an opportunity. Again, you know, when the punk goes up in practice and you're the guy that's supposed to catch it and burst and try to score, you know, you got to take advantage of that opportunity. And we got a lot of guys working at that. And I think we'll be pretty dynamic back there. We needed about five minutes for that Jabril question, so I'm not afraid. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love it. <laughs> How difficult is it? to replace him and can you do it with a single guy or how do you approach that? Um, you know, it, it's funny, like Jabril, I mean, I think every player that you coach, I really believe this, is irreplaceable, right? Jabril Peppers is Jabril Peppers. You're not going to have another Jabril Peppers, you know, so in terms of replacing him, you're not going to replace him, but, you know, is his position, is his skill replaceable? Of course, you know, that's what we're here for, you know, if, if a kid comes in and he's in, irreplaceable, I don't know why you're coaching, you know. So, you know, we're going to replace him with however we feel is necessary to get that position to the skill level that he brought. Um, and it's exciting, you know, and it, it's, it's, it's motivating. And, uh, you know, Jabril Peppers is, uh, is a phenomenal athlete and was a great teammate and a great kid here. But, you know, we've moved on from that, you know, and we're, we're working with the guys that we have to, to make sure that that position that he played is better than when he played it there, however we do it. Does that position morph to, to fit the new guy's strengths and what you're going to do with it? Of course. I mean, I think it needs to. You know, you're not going to kind of fit a square peg in a round hole or anything like that. We're going to make sure that we understand who the guys we have in that position are and, uh, you know, and, and, they're, and use their skill set 100%. So what, so what are the strengths of Metellus and Hudson and anybody else you have there? Uh, what are they? Um, Metellus is a very savvy football player. Um, you know, he steps on the field, he understands angles and, you know, and how to get, get things done. Um, whereas, you know, you know, he doesn't have to be as taught as some other football players. Um, he gets it, he understands schemes, he understands the big picture, gets himself in the right position, and he's a fierce competitor. Um, Hudson is the fiercest competitor. He, he does everything right. He prides himself on doing everything right. He's very physical. He's low to the ground. He gets under people. He strikes people. Um, he plays really hard. Um, he's very self-motivated. You know, they both have tremendous strengths. Was that ability to pick it up quickly why Josh was doing it last season? I mean, that's what we were told the other day was that mm -hmm. they got partway through the season and oh, yeah. just said, we don't have a backup Viper. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you got to find the savviest guy who's able to do it and, and, and plug him in, you know, when, that, when something like, you know, Jabril's injury and stuff happens. So, yes, that, that would be the reason, yeah. Who are the guys battling with McCray and Devin? Um, whew, there's a there's a there's a wide variety of them, but you know obviously um, you know Robo, uh, Robluski, he's uh, he's a tremendous competitor and a hard worker, and again a guy that shows up and takes advantage of every opportunity he gets, and you know he's a guy that we're looking at to be a leader for us. Um, you know then you got you know Embosse who's uh, who's taking a huge step here in this spring. We we love what we're seeing out of him. Um, he's moving around and hitting and starting to understand what it takes to play linebacker at this level. Um, you got Devin Gill, who's there, moving around, doing a great, great job, and, and playing hard, and um, another fierce competitor. Um, ben Mason's in the mix there. You know, he's uh, just a big guy who likes contact, and we like that, and that kind of fits into Don's defense. Um, you know, you got Jared Wengler, who's there, and he's been here for a while, and he's you know kind of doing the right thing and, and working hard, and same deal. So. There's a bunch of there's a good variety of guys. Just with the part returners, is there some walking before they can run? The real the real never the ball, and that was uh, everything else he did on top of that. But he was so sure-handed. I mean, how, yeah. how much of it right now is you got to find somebody who can. Yeah, that's a first. yeah, that's a great point. Um, you know, so yeah, so it is. It's uh, it's something that um, we have a coach that's just you know with them constantly all the time. They are special. I treat punter returners like specialists. So they're like your kicker, punter, long snapper. They have their own individual deal. And, um, you know, Drew Terrell, who's, uh, who's a grad assistant, does a phenomenal job. He's really focusing on spending all the time with them that he can um, and treat them like specialists. Um, you know, when we're going over special teams, we're doing a lot of stuff. You know, one of my goals uh, for this team is to be a very dynamic return team. You know, I want to I wanna lead the country in punt returns. You know, we kind of led the country in blocks last year. And, you know, believe me, we're going to come after people, but, you know, we want to flip the script and, and do a lot. So we're doing a lot of work on the return game this year, um, different drills, different techniques. We're stepping it up, you know, uh, big time with that. 
So, um, and it, it hopefully it'll help the returners, give them more room and, and things like that. And uh, but yeah, those guys are treated like specialists, and they're you know we're we're walking them slow, we're crawling them, then we're walking them, then we'll we'll run them when the time comes. So Could you have role to have a, a GA focusing just on that, or is it you didn't pass your um, Well, you know what, I, I didn't, but um, it, it was it, it's just something that I kind of. When I was at the Citadel, um, I was able to work with the punt returners, and uh, the coach there was uh, was kind of an old school, older guy. You know, retired a long time ago, but he had uh, he had somebody focused on that and treated those guys like specialists. And I didn't do that last year, um, but then it kind of you know was just thinking about it and stuff. And we had a really good Andre Roberts was the punt returner there. Uh, he's been in the league for what ten years now, um, you know, and. and I just felt like th that time that I was able to spend with him and, and, and just focus him as an individual player, you know, was was you know was good to get those guys up to speed, you know. So that's why you know I think Drew is going to do a good job because they have someone to go to all the time. You know, as a coordinator, you're working on the whole unit. Well, you forget about individual positions sometimes. You know, you try to get at them. Well, those guys need someone standing there coaching them at all times. Um, so we went with that direction. Hopefully it works out. Do you expect the – Kenny did everything. Do you expect those yeah. three positions, kickoff specialist and the other two, to be split between three different guys this year? Well, yeah, I'm not ready to say that because um, we're working everybody at everything. You okay. know, um, we're, we're trying to make sure that we're making well-rounded football players. And it's the same thing that we treat – Coaches, the other coach, you know, Don treats the defense like this. You know, Drev treats the offense like this. Well, you know, I treat the special teams where we try to teach these guys the whole deal. You know, so the punters understand the protections. The gunners understand what the line's doing. The line understands what the gunners are doing. You know, it just, you know, just the kickoff team, they understand where it all fits in. Well, we're trying to do that in the spring with the entire specialist group. You know, the kickers understand what the punters have to do, where they've actually done it. The punters have to kick. You know, the kickoff, everyone kicks off. You know, I think it'll make a, a more well-rounded player. Um, you know, but we, we have guys, you know, we have a lot of guys competing at all those spots. Brad Robbins is in that, um, in your recruiting class oh, this yeah. year. Will he be part of that mix? So he'll, he'll be in the opportunity to, uh, oh, yeah. to win he'll, the job? Yeah, of course. You know, we just, you know, here it's, it's you come in and you have the opportunity to play here. And the best players, the best young men, the best teammates, they'll play. And uh, he'll, have, he'll have plenty of opportunity to step in and, and do it, see what, you know, show what he can do when he gets here in the summer. What do you really like about him when you, when you guys went down? Um, yeah, so that was like kind of a spur in the moment thing. Um, that was a crazy day. I was kind of like all over the place, and I was able to get into Columbus like in the afternoon. I think I started in like Mississippi, went through Georgia, and then went to Columbus, ended in Iowa. So, you know, I got to see him for like a two-hour stint there. Um, and, you know, I just, I just felt like he was, you know, he was, he was working out, so I didn't really get to talk to him much, but I got to kind of see him just stand there and watch his workout and, you know, or be in the stands for it. And it was raining. It was cold. Um, and he was just not just focusing in on his work, at doing what he had to do, extremely athletic, um, you know, extremely active leg. Um, I just felt like he was a competitor right off the bat. I don't know, I just got that sense. You know, he's a four-sport athlete, and, you know, I think that's what we were kind of looking at in a punter is, a, is an athlete who can integrate in the team and, and be really good. And I just got that sense right off the bat. And, you know, and he was competing at his workout with his other teammates. It was just, you know, I felt like he was he was a competitor and liked what I saw. Are any of the uh, early enrollee freshman guys you're using in the return game? Uh, yeah, of course, of course. Well, we uh, we're using all of them. They're all going to get their shot. Anybody stand out after four practices? Um, no, no, not not necessarily. They're all uh, they're all taking advantage of opportunities. Those guys are going to make mistakes. They're going to do good things, and it's going to kind of be like that through the spring until they mature and go into camp. So. You know, I don't think anyone's standing out, but I don't think anyone's not standing out. Mm -hmm. I think they're all doing a good job. They're a very good group. You also got time for one or two more. Go ahead. What's the experience like with Solomon? I mean, was it that all nerves that, for you at the end? Is that just a crazy <laughs> experience? Like with, with um, Shine? I mean, yeah. with Shine, you had a real prior relationship, but I mean, it went down to the end as well. Yeah, I mean, I think it's kind of funny. Like, the way I approach it is like, I just got to meet a great family and great people, and you know, hopefully they make the right decision. But if they don't, I still had a heck of an opportunity to form a great relationship with uh, with a young man. And you know, me and me and Aubrey got really tight through it. Um, you know, kind of tighter than you get with other kids sometimes. Um, you know, so I felt I felt really good about it just because my relationship was able to to get really tight. And, and you know, I've kind of taken to the whole thing with recruiting. And you know, I just when I start meeting and, and, and getting a relationship with players, I try to start mentoring them. 
Because I think the, the recruiting process is kind of, you know, broken. You know, there's, it's, it's, all these coaches are, are just selling and, and trying to, you know, sell the kids on the program and be all flashy. And they got all these game rooms and all these, you know, flashy things and these great meals and everything's like great. Well, you know, where's the mentorship of being a coach? You know, where does that come in? You know, that's kind of lost. So I've kind of flipped the script, you know, because it's kind of what I did as a high school coach to try to mentor them. That's what I try to do in recruiting is, you know, instead of, like, just selling all the time, what about mentoring them and, you know, and helping them? Because they're high school kids that are going through this monster process, and they have issues, and they have things that they need to advice to, that they need to get. And, you know, so I, Aubrey kind of took to that mold, I think. So it wasn't that nerve-wracking, to be honest. I, I kind of felt good about it. Did, recruit, did you have to deal with any of the kids wondering about the, that last wave of rumors about Jim going to the NFL and, you know, then he talked about the jive turkeys and all that stuff? Oh, did yeah, yeah, to, of course. You know, it's something you got to – you guys – I mean, it's like you, you have to make sure that you cut that stuff off and explain that it's not true and it's just people, you know, other coaches that are trying to, you know, put the pull the wool over your eyes. But honestly, that helps us more than it hurts us because, you know, you just – why? well, they're talking about him instead of their school. You know, really, why don't they focus on themselves, you know, instead of being scared of, of who we are, you know. And, and you know, 17, you know, they, they kind of take to that. You know, yeah, you're right. You know, I don't know why. You, and then they, you know, kind of, it, it turns into a negative more than it, it hurts us. It turns into a negative against the other schools, to be which, honest. Which coaches were those? Which, co which coaches were those that were spreading those rumors? Oh, probably all of them. <laughs> <laughs> can I just ask, well, yeah, you, yeah, you, you talked about the chip on the shoulder thing. You said that last year, too, going in with the position group. I yeah. mean, is that... Legit. I mean, is that something you, you want to coach with that kind of attitude, or do they, do they feel like they're? I, I mean, I like it. I mean, I, I just I feel like you know, I, I don't know. It's just my mentality is you know I feel like every day I wake up I have something to prove. You know, and I and I love you know having the guys on the team feel like that because they do. They have something to prove every day. You know, they have they want to win a national championship. But they, they can they have to prove that they have to do it. So, you know, it's the way I coach, the way I live. You know, I just, every day I wake up, I feel like I have something to prove. It's just who I am, you know, and it doesn't affect my day, but it motivates my day. And I think that if you can get the players to do that and, and come in with, with something to prove every day and really believe it, it just, it, it makes them better and hungrier and, and um, you know, just better overall, you know, guys at practice and everything like that. And then you get the team to do that. Then all of a sudden you got a whole group of guys that have something to prove, and that, that's pretty unstoppable. And sort of bounce around. How many times did you get questions about... Jim? Um, in terms of, of that, that last rumor, yeah. Oh, I don't remember. I mean, but it was people, enough that. Yeah, I mean, people ask the questions, of course. You know, it's uh, people try to spread that stuff, but it's something that you're just so used to doing that it happens a lot. Thanks, Chris.